Machine shot. Yeah, boy. Are you ready to become the ultimate warrior? A maniac who chooses to swing his weapon in a full 360, rather than just attack his enemies head on. This is the Dominator build, and it revolves around one of the best attack skills in Outward, Moonswipe. To make this build properly, I recommend talking to Burak near the beginning of the game with a halberd equipped. This will grant you Moonswipe right off the bat, and it's a very useful skill. Essentially, it swings your weapon around you twice and hits with the force of a tornado. Additionally, it will gain greater damage if you have the Discipline and Rage boons active. So our job is to keep those up as much as we can. Start with Cabal Hermit for your first skill tree. This will grant you extra damage and defense from your boons, and Wind Infuse will give you a massive bump in power. Due to the particular weapon we want, it will also be a requirement to increase our weapon speed. Lastly, we get Conjure, which isn't really necessary, but it does let us get a Blood Turret inside Blood Sigil, if we really want it. Do remember you need to activate all the Wind Altars to use Wind-based magic, such as Wind Infuse. Every region has one Altar, and it can usually be found near a broken down tower. We must now head over to Monsoon and the Swamp for the Warrior Monk Skill Tree. This tree is in most of my builds, because it offers an incredible resource known as stamina. The breakthrough grants 40 extra stamina, and that's so nice to have for longer fights. Next, we want Master of Motion. And I know what you're thinking, Perfect Strike is an incredible skill. Yeah, it cuts through enemies defenses and looks awesome at the same time. However, we want to instead take Master of Motion because it will increase all of our elemental defenses by 10 each. Since we already took a Ball Hermit, our total elemental defense will be amazing. This plus 10 is only active when you have the Discipline boot on, so like I said earlier, you'll need to always have that active. Luckily, Discipline potions are easy to craft in great numbers, and there are two other easy ways to get this buff as well. Our top tier skill here will be Counter-Strike. Flash Onslaught gets rid of the Discipline boon on use, making it completely worthless in this build. Now, I skipped over the bottom tier skills of this tree, but Focus and Brace are very important. Focus grants you the Discipline Boon and will only burn a small amount of stamina to do so. This is the easiest way to get your precious boon as it requires no combat or crafting. Next, we have Brace, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know it's Outward's best skill. It acts as a counter and will stagger any enemy by 50%. A staple for every melee build, but it too grants the Discipline Boon when you counter an enemy. So using this alongside Focus helps to keep our boon up every time we enter combat. For our third and final skill tree, we need Hex Mage. This isn't necessarily the best option for pure melee, but it has absolutely broken quality of life that this build synergizes well with. The Bloodlust passive makes it so we never have burnt stats. When you use stamina or take damage, you will burn some of your health and stamina, making it impossible to regen them fully. This skill gets rid of burnt stats when something dies around you. Enemies, co-op partners, and even the ghost you can spawn in will all work for this and keep you from ever drinking another tea again. This skill also grants you 5 health for every death around you, so it keeps you confident in battle while also healing you after each encounter. It's just amazing to have, trust me. Next, we'll grab Blood Sigil and Cleanse. The Blood Sigil can be used with Conjure to activate a Blood Turret, which is always good to have for tougher enemies. It isn't required, but we might as well grab it. Cleanse will give you an easy way to get rid of corruption and create those Dark Stones for this Sigil. Remember, using Cleanse requires a Mana Stone and will hurt you severely. Luckily, we can use Mana Ward from the Philosopher's Skill Tree right before using cleanse and you take no damage. Except for bleeding, no way around that one. Hex Mage will give you the backup you need and it feels perfect in this build once you get it going. Skill trees are done, but we still need some equipment to boost our damage and defense. Our helmet will be the Master Kazite Cat Mask. This is always a good mask and looks insanely cool. We want it for two additional reasons though. Number one, it has cooldown on it, letting us use Moonswipe more often. Number two, it can be enchanted with Assassin for extra physical damage and impact. This is of course one part of this build that it excels in, 
and increasing the amount by which we knock enemies down and delete their health is never a bad thing. You will need to legacy chest a Kazite Cat Mask to improve it to Master, so don't forget to do that. Next up, we want to grab the Wolf Plate Armor. This can be tricky to get if you don't know where to look, but there are a few places with high drop rates. Both the Smuggler in Levant and the Armorer in Harmattan can sell it. Smuggler won't be cheap, but she has it 50% of the time. Or you can just loot ornate chests in the desert. There are a lot of these chests in that region, and I have gotten this armor piece several times from them. Again, this armor looks really cool. It glows just like our mask, and I like to think it helps me intimidate my enemies. It has very nice stats as well, making us highly resistant to ethereal damage and physical attacks. To make it even better, you can enchant it with Adrenaline. This is a Soroborian's enchant that grants it negative 10% cooldown. We'll once again increase how fast we can use our Moonswipe skill a second time, as well as any other skill you want to spam. The defense alone makes this chestplate top notch, but with this enchant, it's a force to behold. Also, the collar that it has looks really nice with this helmet. Win-win for the fashion department. Any good adventurer also wears shoes or boots, so we need to get our hands on some noble shoes. You can loot Caldera for these or just buy a pair from the giant in Silkworm's Refuge. As soon as you enter Caldera, take a right and the location is right there. You don't have to fight anything and can immediately leave the region as well if you aren't ready for some tougher enemies. There are a few reasons for picking these boots specifically. They offer negative 5% mana cost, which will bring down the cost from our helmet a bit. They also increase our speed, counterbalancing our chestplate. Then we have the elemental defense, which is just great. 10% ethereal, 20% fire, and 10% decay. Without the 10% from our Discipline buff, and without the 30% from Boons with Cabal Hermit, we have 40% resistance to ethereal damage. That's pretty darn good, and with our full buffs active, elements will mean nothing. This makes for a well-rounded build that won't die in one hit to physical attacks, but also keeps you protected from AoE damage and projectiles. I recommend enchanting these boots with Aegis. This grants them one protection, further buffing our defense. Any other enchant is also good on these, but there isn't much that will buff us other than Aegis. Oh, and these look fancy. Can't forget about the looks, now can we? Overall, this armor setup will give you nice defenses and a good amount of cooldown to increase efficiency in combat. Of course, this means nothing if we pick the wrong backpack, so let's grab Brigand's backpack as soon as we can. I recommend talking to the friendly Immaculate in Caldera and asking him for storage. He will grant you this for free, and it's great on this build. It increases our physical damage by 15% and lets us dodge freely. Unfortunately, it does not allow for the use of a lantern. This is the one problem with this build, and luckily we can use Runic Lantern instead. Buy a lexicon and store it in your backpack. Then pull it out and use the green and blue runes to get that gorgeous lantern. It actually got changed a bit in the recent patch and now looks less blinding. Which is nice, since it is required for this build. Brigand's backpack increases our damage too much to not be using it, and Runic Lantern is actually kind of fun once you get used to it. We also need a weapon for this build, and of course it's going to be the Sar Halberd. Now, you will need to kill the Jay Lich in order to craft it, but he's not that bad and with this setup your elemental defense is great anyhow. This weapon is incredible. It hits with a large amount of impact and will deal high damage every time you attack. It's very slow which does hinder it a bit, but when we grabbed Wind Infuse we made up for this. Wind Infuse grants us extra attack speed and increases our already high impact. Enemies will often be on the ground when you hit them, and since this halberd is very long, it keeps you out of reach a little better than other weapon types. Another reason we want to use this weapon is because durability is a large part of weapons in Outward. Using anything will slowly decrease its durability after you use certain skills and even just hit enemies. Sar weapons have infinite durability and will never break. Combine this with the no burn on our stats and we can rush in and out of fights as much as we want to. This moves the game along a bit faster and lets you just fight stuff, which is often the most fun part of any RPG. So the Sar Halbert is going to be amazing, and again, it looks quite well with this armor, further enticing you fashion fiends. Do be sure to enchant it with a Whiplash. This increases our damage by plus 15%. 
Poltergeist is a great enchant for raw damage, but if we use that enchant, then our backpack and helmet enchant are less useful. So go with Whiplash for a nice boost in extra damage. I often forget about tents in my build videos, but they are just as important, if not more important, than other equipment. The Luxury Tent is my personal favorite on all builds, and I will once again recommend it here. Lowering your stamina cost is always an excellent idea. Now, the Cali Gray Bone Cage is also a decent choice for this build. That one grants 0.25 health per second and plus 10% extra physical damage. It actually boosts our build maybe more than the Luxury Tent, so consider finding one of these. It can be looted in Cali Gray chests over in Caldera. The Friendly Immaculate also offers it over in Caldera, but we already took the backpack from him, making this not available. Use the Luxury Tent until you find this guy, and eventually, you'll run across it. Don't forget we need some mana to make this work. I personally like 3 total points. This gets us up to 80 total mana after our faction quest, and if you need more, just take one additional point. I think 80 is manageable with some mana potions and correct use of mana regen foods, but you may run a bit low if you forget about these. Also, don't forget to take the Sora Borean's Faction Quest. This offers us the Logistics Expert Passive, which offers 10% cooldown, 5% movement speed, and plus 5 pouch capacity. The cooldown will make Moonswipe come back incredibly fast, and the extra speed and pouch are even more quality of life that give you a well-rounded build full of options. Everything else from this faction doesn't matter much, but this one skill is worth it. Now, how do you use this build? First, activate your boons, including Discipline and Rage. The boons massively increase our elemental defense, and the other two increase the damage and impact we do. Next, cast Wind Infuse on the Sar Halberd. This makes our slow weapon faster and buffs our impact through the roof. After that, it's a hack and slash battle. Block until the enemy's done with the combo attack, then hit Moon Swipe and watch the magic happen. You can either block until Moonswipe is back, or just attack. You have the advantage with so much impact, and remember, Brace can stun the enemy if you get yourself in trouble. You become an absolute beast with this build. The only problem it has is lack of mana. After casting everything, you will usually run out. The X-Tree does give us a bit back, but it isn't a lot. Mana potions are very easy to craft, or even buy, which gets rid of this issue but do be aware you might not want to pop every single elemental buff for every fight. Usually one or two will suffice depending on what you're fighting. And that's about it. This build lets you do whatever you want, skill-wise, because the only required skills on your hotbar are Brace and Moonswipe. This leaves things pretty open for you to play around with, and heck, Push Kick could be usable until endgame content if you really wanted it to be. This has been the Dominator build, and hopefully you at least found it interesting. This was a mix of physical damage and extra cooldown that makes for fast-paced combat and really hard-hitting attacks. You'll look good, feel confident, and have a ton of fun with this build. That I can guarantee. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments section, and I will catch you next time.